Okay, so I wanted to share how I'm um, using Trello, which is an awesome uh, Kanban style, Kanban, I don't know how to really pronounce it, style uh, tool for um, organization. It's been around for a while. A lot of people are probably already using it, um, but I've been playing around with the uh, best way to make this fit into my workflow. Um, I found that most of the CRM tools um, that are designed for photographers are really good at doing their specific photography things, but a lot of times they're bad at just overall workflow. So kind of what I'm doing is a combination of keeping my like detailed um, client info, invoicing, payments, all that stuff is going into Studio Cloud. Um, and then in here, I'm gonna start tracking um, actual kind of workflow, um, which I've in the past done using um, a printout um, or I've done it with different boards, but this is great because I can see it uh, anywhere. Um, I haven't entered all of my jobs in here. This is just kind of a sampling of them right now as I was building up the um, how I wanted to make this process work. Um, but so what I'm doing is, so I'm calling this my session workflow tracking here. And what I've done is created a, um, you know, all these lists are adjustable. If you haven't seen, just drag and drop, uh, if you haven't seen Trello before, um, and this is a horizontally scrolling list. Um, basically, each one of these lists can be used as something that you can drag and drop to as well. So I've got this um, one here, and I could drop it onto any of the other sections here. Um, so I've got my book sessions over here. Um, one thing that I've done, and I haven't entered all of them yet, but there is a tool in Trello um, which you have to add that lets you add custom fields. What's really cool about this is that I can actually put in what I've added is a custom field that says the session date. That way I can quickly get an idea of what the date of that session was. Um, and these are done by this area called power ups. Now, power ups are something that you get one free one with a with the free account um, and you're gonna have to choose or you can upgrade to the paid account which i think is 9.99 a month um, which gives you unlimited power ups so what i've done is with custom fields i i clicked new field and i entered a date field and then called it session name this is a good place to keep keep various things if you want to use this more detailed here you could add a checkbox um you know that says uh whatever shot or, or ever, whatever type of thing you want and you can actually have it show up on the front um, when the card is closed. So I'm gonna go back and all I've done is add a uh, session date and I have it showing on the front of the card there. Um, so let me just quickly show you the way you add power-ups. If you go into the menu, click power-ups. Um, from here, you can search for the custom fields, it's going to be this one here, and then you're going to add this, and this allows you to make those custom fields. Um, I may end up going into just starting paying for this because there's a lot of really cool things you can do, a lot of automations, um, but right now I'm keeping it pretty simple here. Uh, so let's say you have a new job. All you got to do is add a card and you type in the job, say Jesse Star, um, and what I'm going to do is there's a couple ways you could do it. You could put in, you know, the type of event it is. So let's say it's a wedding. Um, but the other way you can do this, oops, I actually clicked out of it uh, before. So you got to hit enter. Um, if you click on it, you can actually create labels. So what I've done is create labels for the different types of sessions that I do most often, family, photo booth, commercial advertising, wedding, and headshot. Um, so let's say it's a wedding. So now we can quickly see that that's a wedding based on its um, color co code here. Or you can type it in. It really is up to you. Uh, and again, if I did I click on that and if I add a session date, I can actually use the little calendar dropper here, save that, and then it's going to show the session date there. So I've got that. And let's say that um, I've just finish the shoot. So I don't do anything but until I've actually taken the shoot. Um, I'm just adding, done the shoot. So I'm just adding them here until my first step, bring them into ingest. So this means that I've shot it and I am actively ingesting it. Um, so what I do is, is, and really you can skip these, which is nice about this is that it's not a step-by-step -step workflow because uh, for instance, my if it's not a photo booth, it's not going to go to the transfer to photo booth gallery. So let's say I finish ingesting. I know that next thing I need to do is start culling it. So I can bring it over into my culling section here. 
Um, so I have cull and then process. So that's what I'm actively doing. So, so culling for me means going through and picking out um, all the photos that are going to be selects and that I'm going to work on. Process is they're actively being processed or sent out for, um, you know, sometimes I ha do uh, have my post-production done by um, a third party company or uh, someone else. So that it'll be sitting, living in process. Present, that is my stage where I am either having a design consultation um, with the client or some. if it's a commercial job, a lot of times that means that it is going to be uh, a gallery um, where an online gallery that I'm going to go over with them uh, for selects. Um, then it's getting into retouching. So right now I finished this headshot uh, earlier today. I have um, ingested it, called it, processed it. And um, right now it is being, some of the shots are, I'm working on retouching. Some of them are um, out for retouching. So I can leave that there while I'm finishing retouching. Once it comes back from retouching, that's when I'm going to order product. So I'm going to keep this in the ordering product section until I have gotten all of the products, um, products uh, ordered and um, on their way back to me. One thing that is, uh, you know, cool to, that, you can use this a lot more advanced is that if we click on, so click on the card here, we can actually create a list within it. So if I wanted to create a checklist, say orders, I can now say, say we need to order an album. We need to order some gift prints um, and, you know, whatever, a large canvas collection. So we can have that in there in addition to it just living in the ordering. We can also put in what orders need to happen. So as we collect, select one of those, it says we're 33% done. So you can actually see where you're at in that. And this shows that there is a checklist. If you look in close here, that there's one of three are actually um, have been checked off right now. So you've got more to do. So once every all everything's been ordered and uh, the products are back to me, next thing that's going to need to happen is deliver. Uh, that's going to be obviously sending out the products or having people pick them up or uploading to a gallery, whatever that might be. I tried to get this as simple as possible because if you have too many, you're not going to use it. Um, next step for me would be, so I've delivered everything. Well, I might want to look through that and and maybe it's a shoot that it was like a one-off and i know that i don't want to mark it so i don't need to go here but if it's a wedding i'm probably going to blog it i'm probably going to add some to my portfolio so i'll leave it there until i've done those steps once it's done it can go into my complete section uh what's you know you can also archive these which i probably will um after a given amount of time I haven't really decided on that but if you click archive it's just going to clear it from your uh section so what I would probably do is leave these there for, you know, six to six months to a year, because uh, a lot of times, you know, something else, maybe they want to order products again. So I will probably, if that's the case, it's going back to, you know, say present, say I have another design consultation with them. Okay. So we're presenting it and it restarts our workflow there. Um, so that's a really cool way of kind of organizing, keeping track of your workflow here. The other thing I've, I've added here is um, a section called soon which are basically i'm going to start putting um kind of task lists that are or tasks that i'm going to be working on uh soon and i want to make sure that they're always up there um, there are a million task tracking apps well the reason i want to use this a little more is because i'm already going to be looking at this every day to keep track of my workflows so it's also a good place to keep track of some overarching tasks uh, again the today working on what I might do is sometimes I'll add in like, say I've got a project I'm working on that maybe doesn't fit into the regular workflow, um, but I want to know, you know, that's something I need to work on today. And so I'm going to put it, load it up in there and add whatever I need there. So um, this is a little overview of kind of what I found to be a good way to use uh, Trello for uh, your workflow tracking. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and hope it uh, gives you some help and get a hold of your workflow there.